Leaf concentrate is an extremely nutritious food. It may be the most nutritious of all foods. This chart gives you an idea how it compares to other better known nutritious foods. It's especially rich in protein, iron, calcium, and vitamin A. That's also a good source of many other vitamins and minerals. We make leaf concentrate by grinding or pulping fresh leaves, then pressing the pulp leaves to extract as much juice as possible. We then heat the juice and a curd, like green cottage cheese, floats to the top. This curd contains most of the proteins, oils, vitamins, and minerals in the leaf. We then squeeze as much liquid from the curd as we can. What remains is leaf concentrate. Removing the fiber and water concentrates the nutrients in the green leaves and makes them more digestible. Some edible leaves don't make good leaf concentrate. And many plants with edible leaves are not economically suited for leaf concentrate production. Here are some of the leaf crops that have been used successfully to make leaf concentrate, starting with alfalfa or lucerne. This is an ideal crop in the temperate zone. It's a highly productive perennial legume. This means it doesn't have to be planted every year and it can make its own supply of free nitrogen fertilizer from the air. Alfalfa has been used more than any other crop to make leaf concentrate. Cowpeas have been an important leaf concentrate crop in the tropics. Like alfalfa, they fix their own nitrogen, but they're annuals, so they need to be replanted at least once a year. Some other crops that have been used include persim clover. This is also a legume. It's commonly grown in South Asia and in the Middle East. Amaranth. There's several fast-growing tropical annual plants in the amaranth family that are suitable for leaf concentrate. Barley and wheat are two well-known grain crops whose young leaves make excellent leaf concentrate. Several members of the mustard family. These are mainly fast-growing temperate zone annuals. Nettles is a very high protein riverbank plant that sometimes grows as a weed. And Moringa. This is a super productive tropical tree with extremely nutritious leaves. Although the technique for making leaf concentrate was discovered almost 250 years ago, attempts to popularize it as a food have been much more recent. Three NGOs, Find Your Feet in England, Leaf for Life in the U.S., and APEF in France have tried to introduce local leaf concentrate production in over a dozen countries in order to combat malnutrition. Early efforts in India, in Nicaragua, and in Bolivia were small scale and relied heavily on manual labor. Later efforts used powered equipment to pulp the leaves, like this APEF machinery heading to Burundi. Scaling up the operation improved the economics. This women's cooperative in southern Mexico ran a semi-industrialized leaf concentrate operation for nine years. And this French operation, run by a cooperative of alfalfa farmers, dwarfed the Mexican project. Here they process 150 tons of alfalfa per hour. That's a lot of alfalfa. Their focus has been on improved animal feeds rather than fighting human malnutrition. I'll walk you through the process on the semi-industrial scale. First, the workers run the leaves through a forage chopper to make them easier to pulp. Some pulpers don't require this pre-chopping. Next, the women rinse the leaves to remove dirt and dust and then lift the rinse leaves to the pulper. A double set of half inch wide blades spinning at 3,600 times a minute pulp the leaves quickly. The women use a 20 ton hydraulic press to squeeze the juice from the pulp leaves. They then heat the leaf juice quickly in a 30 gallon cooker while gently stirring. When the juice reaches the boiling point, a woman skims the curd off and drains it. 
After the curd cools a bit, the women use the same hydraulic press to remove as much liquid or whey as possible. The press curd is about 55% moisture. The women then granulate the curd by rubbing it through a quarter inch sieve. This speeds up drying by making uniformly small pieces. The women then dry the pressed and granulated curd in simple solar dryers. Finally, they grind the dried concentrate in an electric corn mill. The entire process breaks the leaves into three parts, fiber, liquid or whey, and leaf concentrate. 100 kilograms of leaves usually makes about 45 kilos of fiber, about 50 kilos of whey, and about five kilos of fresh leaf concentrate. The fiber makes a valuable cattle feed. We return the whey to the field as a nitrogen and potassium fertilizer after diluting it with an equal volume of water. The concentrate is by far the smallest of the three leaf fractions. However, only a tablespoon of dried leaf concentrate a day can prevent or reverse serious malnutrition in children. And it can be incorporated into a wide variety of foods. The potential of leaf concentrate to reduce childhood malnutrition is enormous. But there's still some economic and cultural issues to overcome. Thanks for watching.